welcome you in to the Stingers Up Sacramento State Football Podcast. I'm Jason Ross. Glad you're back with us for another edition of the podcast. Now, plenty for us to get you caught up on. How about those 2-0 and Sacramento State Hornets? They won at home in the home opener this last weekend, taking care of Texas A&M Commerce. Today on the podcast, we've got some highlights and a recap of that. We also will hear from Troy Taylor, the former coach of the Hornets. We'll get some of his press conference this week as, yes, the Hornets head to the farm to take on the Stanford Cardinal in their FBS matchup this year, the one game they play up in a game that Troy Taylor actually and Mark Orr signed the contract to do. But now Troy is obviously the coach at Stanford, so we'll preview that. And we're going to hear from a Hornet, Jet Stanley, a six foot four senior, part of an anchor of that defensive line, been two time All Conference, and uh, we will check in with him in today's podcast and this week's podcast as well. But let's start with the win. Saturday night home opener, great crowd, good energy. The Hornets trying to keep their win streak alive. Regular season win streak was twenty in a row coming into the game. And as we look back at it, uh, let's hear from Dave Lewis and Steve McElroy, who were on the call on the radio side of things on Saturday. And the Hornets' opening drive, well, it was a thing of beauty. And now from the seven-yard line, first down Sac State, shotgun snap. Caden Bennett keeps it himself, running left inside the five. Caden Bennett lunges to the end zone for a Sac State touchdown. Last week, two rushing scores, rather two passing and one rushing. And the first rushing score of the game, putting Sac State on the board, 12.03 to play in the opening period. Caden Richardson, the right guard, who is filling in this week. The coaches, the offensive line coach's son, with a great block on the play, freeing up the quarterback for the touchdown. Caden Bennett gets the Hornets' first score less than three minutes into the game. After the early lead and some stops, some dominant performance by the defense, they just weren't budging. Offense got the ball back again for a third series, and they'd get more points on the board from the leg of Zach Schreiner. And so now the Hornets will try a field goal. Their field goal kicker who comes to Zach the Hornets Schreiner from Sac City. Schreiner is one of two on the season. Last year, eight of 11 was one of two last week. Snapback ball down, kick is up. And it's good. Kick is good. Possessions for the Hornets, three, two scores. So at this point, Sacramento State up 10 to nothing, trying to add some more. And Caden Bennett was the the undeniable starter, kind of separated himself with the week one performance. And so Coach Andy Thompson said he was going to be our guy. And they trusted him. And he had a good first half, a great first half, in fact. And here he would find Chris Miller with a great catch. Bennett peeking over to the sideline for play instructions. Makes the adjustment, takes the shotgun snap, dropping back as Caden, fires to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. Chris Miller in traffic. Wow. What a grab. He had to battle for that, Dave. I want to see that replay because he had to rip the ball away from the defender. Look at that. And he barked at him, too, afterward because he felt like he was fouled. And he was on the ground, and how could he even see the ball coming at the angle he was at? Amazing job by Miller. So Bennett's now scored on the ground once. He's thrown a touchdown pass. Hornets are up comfortably. Then Bennett showed maybe what can separate him from some of the other players on this team. His speed, his athletic ability. Here, Bennett utilizing all of his talents. Caden Bennett keeps himself, fake the handoff, turns the corner, Bennett inside the 20-yard line, Bennett down the sideline, Caden to the house for a Sacramento State touchdown. (laughs) Wow. He shifted gears beautifully. He burned rubber, I think, in between second and third gear. Dave, did you think he was going to the house? It looked like he was just strolling around the corner, and then he blew him away. Around the 25, I thought he was going to go out of bounds. Bennett doing with his arm and his legs. So in control, we take you to the second half where the Hornets in the third quarter, just another methodical, time-consuming, well-crafted drive that ends in the end zone. Ball to five, first and goal, Sacramento State, under nine minutes to play, third period, leading 27-6. to six. Fulcher in the game, standing on the right hip of Bennett, two receivers right. Fulcher takes the ball right and glides into the end zone for a Sacramento State touchdown. Making it look very, very easy. Well, if the Hornets watch the tape of their first drive of the game and that drive, is there anything they can find wrong with anything? The, the offensive line 
just excellent up front. I mentioned Garza. Stanley was great. Kendall Riley's injured, so Mejia is just a fantastic center for the Hornets as well. 34-6 to would be the final. The Hornets cruise to victory. That's 21 straight regular season wins, and I, I hope for those of you that were able to check out the television broadcast, we had an amazing bra a graphic on there talking about Division I regular season consecutive wins and the company that the Hornets are in right now. It's Georgia number one, I think at 28 wins. The Hornets at 21, and then Michigan at 18. That's incredible. I mean, it really is. I know there's even bigger and greater things to chase, but I hope Sacramento State Hornet fans, especially those that have been around for a long time, appreciate what they have currently done for the last couple of years under Troy Taylor and now certainly under Andy Thompson. It is truly impressive. Now, granted, that's going to be tested big time this week. In fact, the Hornets' last regular season loss Came a couple years ago at Cal, and so they went on to win the rest of those league games that year, 8-0. Won all 11 games in the regular season last year. That's 19 straight. The two this year gets them at 21. So they uh, they go for a quest of 22. That'll be a tough one. We'll preview that one coming up with some comments from Troy Taylor. But had a chance this week to catch up with uh, one of the Hornets, and it's a Jet Stanley. His brother Jordan's on the team as well, twin brother. You're going to hear about their relationship, about how he came to Sacramento State, and what he wants to do after the this year. And I know he wants uh, bigger and greater team goals. You'll hear that coming up. But here was a chance I had to catch up with Jet Stanley. Jet, let's kind of start with your your background. You've been a great Hornet. You've been here for a while. But how did you uh, – ultimately, how did you get here to Sacramento State? So throughout high school, played football every year and uh, started as a sophomore on varsity and then uh, just went through all the recruiting and everything and – um, eventually what really landed me here was having both me and my brother get recruited here and he actually got um, he got offered on signing day like or the night before and so we were kind of up in the air and then right before it started we decided to come here and it was the best decision I ever made did you know all along and your brother Jordan that you were did you want to be a, like a combo package that was the goal, you know, but we were both prepared for it not to happen. And for a while, the whole recruiting process, we didn't think it was going to happen. And then that last day, it just it seemed like a sign from God. It's like, all right, let's go. Yeah. Who was your, I'm mean, trying to think, coaching timeline? You probably had a different coach then. Who was the, uh, who was the recruit that got you here? Uh, coach Lewanton was oh, the yeah. main guy that recruited me. And then Coach Plemons was the defensive mm -hmm defensive line coach and then Sears was the head coach gotcha so now you get here you get the new you know the change Troy Taylor and since you've been here I mean all you guys have done is is win um, probably had those goals but did you think it would go this well with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships mm, absolutely not <laughs> I really did not expect the 2018 my first year when I redshirted it was nowhere near as successful <laughs> right and now it's just the stands are packed, and it's just so much fun. And I, I really did not see that coming. I, I really did believe that we would have success when we reset everything, but I did not see it being this instant, mm -hmm. honestly. And I think if I have it right, so 19, you win the conference championship, and then 20, the election to not play, which was, I mean, it was just such a weird time for society. What was that COVID year, really lockdown year like? Yeah. Um, it was interesting to say the least. And I kind of agreed with coach Taylor's call to take off that season. Just like you said, it was kind of messy mm -hmm. and we just really, I felt like it was a, maybe not quite unanimous, but most people agreed to take that year, get healthy. If anybody had injuries, we could fix it. If anybody needed a procedure done, it's a perfect time to do it and get back and just be ready for the 21 season, and I'd say we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wouldn't even think just even just where you are in your life as you're growing up, you're becoming more of a man, just life experience. Like, I don't know. Again, none of us had ever been through anything like that, but I don't want to say football was secondary, but maybe just knowing that it was going to come back at some point. I, I'm guessing that 2021 20, year, you guys were just ready to unleash on everybody. Yeah. No, I remember the first game that we played was at um, – at Utah Tech now. Mm -hmm. It was a different name back then. But, yeah, and I remember 
I was so ready to go <laughs> that on like the first drive, I was uh, on the ground twice just because I was like running out of my shoes. Mm -hmm. I was just so ready to get after the quarterback. Yeah. But I just, and then after that game, I was like, all right, you know, you can, our coach, he always uh, brings up, um, be quick, but don't be in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to take a step back and put that motto back into the way I was playing. Yeah. And then, you know, I got my feet back under me and got after it. I want to talk to you about your coaches. Coach Paulson has been here in this ride with, uh, was with Coach Taylor, now still here with Coach Thompson. Uh, Coach Slowey is new here to the program. And then Coach Thompson is still overseeing all that. So how about kind of the defensive leaders that you hear from on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so it's still Coach Thompson. He's still the head of the defense. And so, honestly, as a defensive side with the head coach change, it doesn't feel super different. You know, um, Coach Thompson, instead of just now overseeing defense, he oversees everybody and still the defense. You know, so it's at practice, he's still the one calling the plays, and it feels the same. And I really feel like it was like the smoothest transition we could have had on the defensive side. On offense, you know, I don't, I'm not on that side, but I – we have the same majority of the same coaches, and I think that it went pretty smooth over there as well. I haven't heard anything negative. And um, so, yeah, with Coach Thompson at the forefront and then my position coach, Coach Paulson, and the newly added Coach Slowey, it's been a really good combination of Coach Slowey's, like, pass rush techniques and then everything that Coach Paulson brings to the table with all his years of expertise. So far, so good. Two wins for you guys. Defense has done their part. Um, what have you seen that from that group? You guys even have some injuries there, but what do you think you guys can do as the season goes on? I think just the sky's the limit, honestly, for this team. I think we can just keep building, and this week's going to be a good test. I think we need to go in there and just play the best that we can and see where the cards land. And I'm confident with this team. I really do think that we can do something special. Yeah. The media naturally is going to make a lot of this. Troy Taylor, Stanford, I mean, he signed the deal to play Stanford when he was coach here not knowing he would be the coach there. Um, it feels like you guys probably want to make it just another game, but is it this weekend? Yeah, it is. It's another game. But, you know, we – everybody understands, like, what this game is, you know, but it is. It's another game. We're going to prepare the same way, and we're just going to go in there. It's a faceless opponent every time we get on that field, and we're going to go in there with the intent to win just like we always do. When you've done, you've lived it now, let's see, two years ago at Cal, you guys lost, but that's playing up. Last year, you guys demolished Colorado State. What is the difference of playing an FBS team in your mind? Um, you know, honestly, I would just say it's like facilities. You know, the stadiums are always super nice and everything, but. So not the like, players. I, you know, everybody puts their shoes on the same way. You know, we're all here to just play football and. I think as time has gone on, the gap between FCS and FBS has yeah. narrowed. And I think we proved that when we went to Colorado State, and I'm hoping that we can do it again. How about um, you mentioned coming here with your brothers, kind of the, the package, combo package. He was away from the program for a couple of years. Now he's back. What's what's that like? It's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's honestly the prayer answered, and it's just – it's been so unbelievable, like – when he first came back and we got to go through fall camp after going through two fall camps without him i've played football with him this is my 16th year playing and i've been with him every single year other than that and without him it was a huge adjustment but for him to be able to come back and especially for our family mm -hmm. i just i've heard from our parents so much how happy they are <laughs> just to see him in the uniform you know and yeah. see us both out there taking pictures again while we're all together but it's it's been so much fun and I mean this is a great year for us the last couple of years while you were playing what was he supporting you was he coming to the games I mean he's obviously has friends on the team mm -hmm. yeah no he was at every home game and every away game that my parents were able to fly to yeah. he was there and um yeah he interned for my dad for a little while that's what he was doing while he was away but yeah no he was always here always supporting he was always the first person that would tell me what I need to fix <laughs> after the game yeah. or whatever it was or good play anything like that he I was he was the one that I trusted the most because he knows what college football is like and like it's a lot of it is do your job you know everybody needs to do their 111th on the field and he would always remember specific plays too he's like oh yeah on this play you know they could do this or it was a good job on this but yeah it was honestly really nice it was like having a personal coach when mm -hmm. I went home 
So your dad lost an intern, but you gained a, a teammate. Uh, what was he doing for your dad? What does your dad do? He's in the construction industry. Okay. Yep. And so he was working with, under my dad and learning, like, the ropes about what you would do in that industry. And that was the main thing was he kind of touched in each, uh, like, category of where he oversees and everything like that so he could just learn some things. What would Jordan say is more difficult, construction work or playing college football? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Uh, he did have to get up pretty early for yeah. work, but yeah, I, I'd say physically he'd choose football, mm -hmm. but you know, wow. yeah, <laughs> physically it'd be yeah. football. Um, so you mentioned you guys always played together, but you always, always played offense and you always played defense together as two way players in high school. Now he's O line when he came here as a D line, like you, um, you faced each other quite a bit in camp. What was that like? It was very unique, you know. It, it was fun, and, you know, everybody else really loves to hype it up, mm -hmm. you know. I remember our very first year, our freshman year, when they first switched them, they did like a – it was the end of practice, like a little competition kind of thing, offense, defense. They lined me and him up against each other and put a cone behind them. Mm -hmm. And so as defense, I need to get to the cone, and he obviously needs to prevent me from getting to that cone. And they blew the whistle, and, you know, we just obviously got after each other. It was like a <laughs> sumo drill. And at the very end of it, I was able to get him back towards the cone, and it was, like, right beneath him, and I kind of touched it right under him. And it was very kind of cool, totally like a like plot that would happen. Yeah. And the offense freaked out. The defense freaked out. They both thought that the, they won. Uh -huh. They thought Jordan – offense thought Jordan won. Defense thought I won. And it ended up being the whole team went crazy. Yeah. And I, I ended up calling it a tie, I guess. But I was going to say, how would Jordan tell the story? Would he tell it differently? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, it was we got bombarded at the same time. He had offensive guys jumping on him, and I had defensive guys jumping on me. But it was a fun little drill that we did. You've been all-conference, uh, been a great Hornet in the D-line. If you, from day one, were put on the offensive line, how do you think you would have done there? Um, I think – I do think I would have succeeded. I feel very – passionate about the game and obviously we both came here as D-Lime and that's what we wanted to do and it was a rough transition when he switched over but you know just like he did I think I would have done the same I think he just it took a second but you know you embrace it mm -hmm. and you you just keep getting better and I do I think I would have been successful there as well do you have a favorite play favorite moment I mean obviously it's team success you've had a lot of but individually a play a moment you've taken away from your Hornet career at least to this point yeah, the, the one I really like to think about every now and then is at Montana. There was the, I think they hadn't lost in a while at home. And uh, I Hornets remember. never won there. Yeah, yeah, we never won, and we ended up winning, and I got a sack on that game. But they got to thank my guys. We had a pressure coming, and I was just the contain guy. Mm -hmm. And we had our linebackers and my counterpart, Tyler Hardeman, mm -hmm. He got right through and forced the quarterback to roll out, and I was just going B to C, mm -hmm. and here he came right around my corner, and there he was. So, yeah. you know, it's an individual success, but when you really look at it, I couldn't have done it without them. As far as team success, like we mentioned it's been there. I get the feeling, too, like there's everything you've done, everybody's still chasing more. Do you get that sense, too? Yeah, 100%. I still – we won three uh, championships in a row – and I still feel like we're the underdog mm -hmm. a lot. You know, with rankings, we're never number one, you know, and, and that's okay with me. You know, I think it helps to keep us like we have not arrived, not even close. And even playing in the games, you know, you, you come back and watch film, and there's so much to fix even on every game. You just you can't be perfect. And so, yeah, I do. I think that we still have a ways to go. How about for you personally? What would you like to do when your Hornet season's done? Um, it's a good question. I just more football. I would like to 100%. I would love to play more football. You know, that's what I've done. That's kind of been who I am, mm -hmm. you know, since I was seven. And so yeah, that would be the best thing. I would love to keep playing. But other than that, I got my mechanical engineering degree. And you know, I, I wanted to prepare myself for if it didn't happen. And so I feel I feel confident in where I'm at. And so I could either I've always wanted to do automotive engineering or construction kind of like what my dad does and so that would be the plans for after yeah. no intern though dad's got to pay you now right yeah oh he got paid oh okay, he was good. a paid internship good. yeah <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. So, but if I mean football top priority, but interesting automotive engineering. Like, what 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 do you envision that being? Um, I've my dream would be we've we're a Ford family. Okay. My uh, dad's dad, so my grandfather, he worked at Ford his entire life, and um, we're a huge Ford family. And my dad knows just about everything you could possibly know about cars, and so we would work on them, work on ours. I remember we changed the clutch in the in our. We have a 2006 Mustang, and that was an interesting story. We did not have the right tools for that, but <laughs> figured it was way. figured our way through yeah. it. And so, the dream job would be just working on Mustangs, figuring out how to make them faster. You know, obviously more fuel efficient, but speed is always the fun part. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, it's been great watching you. I know you got more to do. Hopefully, there's a, a trophy waiting for you at the end of this, too. Uh, congrats on your success, and uh, it's been uh, great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Well, certainly wish the nothing but the best for Jet, and hopefully a great year ahead for him and the Hornets. This week, though, the next goal, the next task at hand, and you can hear it a little bit there with Jet. Like this, sure, it's another game, but maybe it's not. I mean, obviously, you get paid to go to Stanford. There will be Hornet fans that come down there. But it's playing Troy Taylor, the guy that helped build this program to the success it is. And he left. He left the program. It was really an odd situation at the end of the year last year when the Hornets are playing their biggest game in school history. All the rumors are floating about the day of the Incarnate Word game. And then, uh, you know, Troy, you totally understand how he has to take the job. But after the most difficult loss, I mean, it's the next day and he's introduced at Stanford. So that was tough. I still wonder how it would have all gone had the Hornets won. He still would have accepted the job, but I think it might have been easier to deal with knowing that he would have finished out the coaching season and maybe another week, maybe a couple more weeks, and they're holding him a trophy. Who knows? But the reality was it was a bizarre time. He has moved on. He is now the coach of Stanford. Andy Thompson's at Sacramento State. And this week in his uh, press conference, Troy Taylor was talking to the media down in the Bay Area and you know, really talking about this opponent in Sacramento State when he knows so much about him. Yeah, I think uh, during the, you know, the preparation process, um, yeah, you know the personnel um, and then you know their scheme a little bit more. So I think in, in terms of preparation, but, you know, he feels the same way in terms of knowing um, our scheme on offense. So I'm sure uh, when he's preparing and then, uh, yeah, going against those guys in practice every day and the personnel, um, and then, you know, seeing them, I think, on, uh, you know, game day. Um, obviously, those are all people that are really important to me on the staff um, and good guys and really good coaches and we'll wish them the best. Um, just just not on not on Saturday. <laughs> well, following up, more comments from Coach Taylor about how this game even materialized. I think we heard a little bit about it last week on the podcast with Mark Orr, but here's Troy's version of, how the Hornets and Stanford Cardinal even got this game set up. Yeah. I mean, I think I was a part of the scheduling actually. I had, um, um, I think it was our AD Mark Orr came to me and we had a couple of, couple of choices and I was like, yeah, we'll play Stanford up the street. Let's, let's go do it. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, um, it's definitely, there's some intrigue. And I think when you know each other, um, probably pretty well schematically and how you think and all those things. It's definitely adds another layer to the game and preparation and all those things that go into somebody that has a lot of familiarity with you in your system and how you do things. Um, there's, it adds another layer for sure. Now keep in mind, I don't think Troy realized you know, I know he didn't realize when he was signing that deal along with Mark Orr that he'd be the coach of Stanford, but that's the reality. Things move quickly. Life comes at you fast. Right. And so uh, this team is one and one. They beat Hawaii. Their second game just got trounced a week ago by USC, who's obviously very good. But I, I don't know that I've ever seen a Troy Taylor team lose like that. So you know he's going to be a motivated guy this week. But one thing he was asked was a question I thought would be familiar to a lot of you guys out there about the quarterbacks. He's played two now, started one, and then last week in kind of the fill-in after getting down so much, played two. So he was asked if he was comfortable announcing a starting quarterback for this week. Yeah, they, they, you know, they both both shown a lot of promise. So, um, yeah, I'm not ready to to commit to one or the other. I think I feel a lot of confidence with both of them. Um, I felt that way coming out of camp, and I thought Justin did a 
did a good job coming in as well. So um, now I'm not ready to say, you know, both will be ready to go and and uh, both could play. We'll see. All right. So we could see two quarterbacks. We might see one. Who knows? That's what Saturday will determine. The other thing that Coach was asked about, and obviously his connections to Sacramento State, and to Andy Thompson. He hired Andy Thompson as his defensive coordinator. Those two have built a bond, a friendship, and now they're going to coach against one another. But uh, Coach Taylor shared his thoughts on Andy Thompson. Really smart, really bright, um, great preparation. Um, uh, he's got uh, a good feel for the game, uh, gets his guys to play hard, you know, all the things that make up a really good coach. And then schematically, there's lots of challenges. He brings pressure from a lot of different areas. Um, they just do a great job of disguising what they're doing. Very difficult on the on the pre-snap to see what they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, he's just, I think you said, just been a tremendous defensive coordinator. Um, and his guys love playing for him and, and they play hard. And uh, that was a key, certainly to our success there was, of being great on defense and he was a de deserving hire um always thought he would be a great head coach just the way he thinks um uh, how he deals with people and then uh, just how sharp he is another question directed at troy taylor was the fact that stanford comes in as the fbs team as the favorite in this game but troy knows better than that he was quick to point this out when asked about being the favorite he said look the hornets will think they could come in here and win this game regards to Sacramento State, I mean, this is a team that they expect to come in here and win. We uh, Last year, we went to Colorado State and had that expectation and um, were able to, to win that game. They have that mentality. They expect to, to win every game. Uh, this is going to be an incredible challenge for us, uh, both schematically, and I know those kids are recruited, you know, the majority of them. Um, they're good players. They're tough players, um, and it's going to be a it's going to be a very challenging and tough game for us. And last but not least from Coach Troy Taylor's press conference, his uh, basically his relationship and his thoughts on the Hornets quarterback now, Caden Bennett, a guy he knows very well. Here's what uh, Troy Taylor had to say about Caden. Yeah, I've known Caden, Caden since in his family since he's, you know, 14 or 15 years old, worked with him at a uh, quarterback school I had and did recruit him to come to um, to Sacramento State. So. Uh, Caden is an exceptionally good athlete. Um, he's a competitor. Um, he's just, he's a dual threat guy, obviously very successful at Folsom High School. Um, his record was incredible. Um, he plays with a lot of confidence and I think his teammates really believe in him. So uh, he's obviously been in uh, that system or uh, very similar to it uh, for a really long time. So um, he's a challenge is you could tell that he's got a lot, he's playing with a lot of confidence and a lot of swagger um, and they utilize him well in, in terms of what he does well, which is a dual threat guy that can, um, is, is really efficient in the passing game and then also a really explosive runner. All right. So there you go. You've heard from the coach. We've got a recap of last week. Hopefully you enjoyed the Jet Stanley interview. That's it. That's another edition of the Stingers Up Sacramento State Football Podcast saturday down on the farm i know a lot of you are going to make the trip down there certainly you'll be able to watch it on tv hopefully you listen on radio as well however you follow it we know you follow your hornets tell more people about this podcast we love how it's growing and getting more and more attention uh, it's fun it's fun covering this team this program and of course it all really really gets started next week with big sky play but this one's it's a huge game the hornets keep moving up in the rankings they're trying to stay perfect and uh, see what they could do against their old coach. So I know it's just another game, but it feels like there's a little bit more on this. Coach Taylor will take that even keel approach. I think Andy Thompson will. Nobody's going to try to put more on this game, but maybe us, the media, the fans. Um, but certainly a, a game that means a lot to Stanford, and certainly it does to the Hornets as well. So we hope you enjoy it. Glad for you listening. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We're back again next week for another edition of the Stingers Up Sacramento State Football.